Here we're looking at the voluntary and the autonomic nervous system. And see how this relates uh, and connects to the central and peripheral nervous systems. We're looking at down here, our um, autonomic and our somatic systems. This kind of key here, the green is the structure. So for our central nervous system, the main structure is the brain and spinal cord. And of course, the function of those is to integrate and um, act as control centers. So looking specifically at our autonomic and our um, somatic nervous systems. Well, this is relating to systems that we have voluntary con motor control over and involuntary control over. So voluntary control will be an example of impulses from the central nervous system going to skeletal muscles for the movement that we have control over. And then involuntary. These would be muscles such as smooth muscle that do move and do contract, but are not under our direct control. Now specifically, uh, the voluntary nervous system relates commands to skeletal muscles and can be controlled by conscious thought. However, reflexes are rapid involuntary movements. They're rapid because the sensory neuron passes information directly to the motor neuron. See that here with the kind of the knee jerk test, where if you um, hang your knee over like a chair or a table and take a little hammer and you hit the tendon just below the kneecap, that will be a prime example of this process in your leg will kick out. This must involve a single connection to interneurons between sensory and motor neurons. And like I said, the prime example is here, and you could try this for yourself. Continuing on, we also have uh, within the autonomic nervous system, we have two pathways. We have a parasympathetic pathway and a sympathetic path pathway. So our parasympathetic nervous system specifically is relating to controlling normal functions. It also is related to conserving energy. We see that with reducing heart rate, stimulating activity of digestive organs, um, constricting urinary bladder. In contrast to that, our symp sympathetic nervous system, this pathway, is kind of like the opposite. It can increase the heart rate. Um, it can kind of inhibit activity of digestive organs. So here we're noticing that stimulate activity of digestive, here we're kind of have the in, in, inhibition effect. Neither of these can be controlled by conscious thought. For example, your pupils that constricting or dilating don't have direct control over that. Composed of elements that act in opposition to one another, and that's the key point here. If there's a way to constrict the, the pupils of your eye, we need a way to dilate the pupils of your eye. If you want to increase your production of saliva, we need a way to inhibit that. So these kind of play off one another. The sympathetic pathway typically dominates in the time of stress, and it controls the flight, fight or flight reaction. It can also increase blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing as an example. Now comparing our autonomic and our, our somatic efferent pathways, well, we kind of see them evident here. And both of these are kind of along, operate along the same lines. They're essentially the same. What's different is what branches uh, that they're involved in, what exact connections that they make. So for example, our autonomic efferent pathway here. We have this connection between the neuron to the, the ganglion, which then forms a second projection, projection from the ganglion to the target effector. So in essentially here, there's an intermediate that's occurring. We see this kind of connection in intermediate before we're actually getting to the target effector, in this case, smooth muscle. In this example here, our somatic reflexes, for instance, involve a direct connection from the spinal cord to skeletal muscle. And this is allowing this direct connection here. And here's our synapse. There's no intermediate. So this would be um, example here. The target effector is a smooth muscle having this intermediate ganglion neuron. And here we have this direct connection between our spinal cord and our skeletal muscle, which would be under voluntary control.